नमस्ते प्रणाम गीताभ्यान ओम पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनीनामध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्मुसंदा भगवद्गीषिणी ओ भगवद्गीता विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल गेव एनलाइटनमेंट टू अर्जुन The ancient sage Vyasa included it in the Mahabharata. O goddess, shower of the nectar-like knowledge of non-dualism contained in your 18 chapters. O my affectionate mother, the destroyer of rebirth, I meditate upon thee. Now, Krishna Vandana, वसुदेव सुतम देवं कंस चाणूर मर्दनम देव किं परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु सन ऑफ वसुदेव स्लेयर ऑफ कंस एंड चाणूर एक्सट्रीम डिलाइट फॉर मदर देवकी ओ कृष्ण सुप्रीम टीचर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स माय सैल्यूटेशन टू यू नाउ uh we are going to take up the reading of 69th shloka of the sankhya yoga the second adhyaya second chapter of uh, shrimad bhagavad gita and uh, shri krishna is going to tell uh, further about the transformation that takes place in a person in the, in an aspirant spiritual aspirant that the sublimation of senses brings in him Hmm, that uh, he has told that uh, uh, in in the previous verse in the previous shloka shri krishna told us that uh, told arjuna smadyasya mahabaho nigruhat nigruhitani sarvashah indriyani indriyarthebhyah asya pratna pratishtha sarvasya indrani indriyani nigruhitani that shri krishna has told Entire, in totality, all the senses to be restrained, nigruhitaanis, to be restrained from the sense objects. Instead of getting tempted by the sense objects, divert these senses towards the sense objects with the sense of divinity, and then that person will be on the steady wisdom. asya prajna pratishtita and now shri krishna is further going to tell in this 69th shloka of the transformation taking place in that person and this in fact also is an answer to the second part of uh, arjuna's question that we will see later now this uh, the 69th shloka is ya nisha sarva bhutanam asyam jagarti sayami यस्याम जागृति भूतानी सा निशा पश्यतो मुने हे नाउ श्री कृष्णा इज टेलिंग द द द क्वालिटी द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन दैट इज हैपनिंग इन द वन हु हैज कंट्रोल्ड हिज सेंसेस संयमी हु हैज रिस्ट्रेंड हिज सेंसेस या निशा सर्वभूताना दैट which is the night for all beings all human beings ya nisha sarva bhuta naam that which is night for all the beings asyam jagarti sayami at that time in that time frame the sayami the one who has controlled his senses jagarti he is away he is not sleeping now normally the, the night time is supposed to be the sleep time for all beings most of the beings <laughs> there are a few who are nishachar of course those who just uh, start their activities in the night 
But majority of the cases, we human beings and all other cats and dogs normally, for them, hmm, what is supposed to be the night? That time frame for the man with controlled senses, Sayami, for him, he keeps on awake. He keeps awake at that time. Asyam Jagrati Sayami, that night time. Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani, and the time frame in which normally all the animals, all the beings, they are awake. Asyam Jagrati Bhutani, Sa Nisha Pashato Munihi. And that time frame in which usually all the beings, they are awake, they are active. That time frame, that time period from the Muni's perspective, from the seer's perspective, it is the night. There you just get into, you, you just retire into your own self. That is the uh, transformation that Sri Krishna has told in this 69th shloka and this is in a way also an answer to the second uh, part of the question that Arjuna had asked Sthita Pradnyasya Ka Bhasha Samadhisthasya Keshava What is the description of one with the steady wisdom? O Keshava, O Arjuna, O Krishna What This is the question of Arjuna in the 54th verse that we had uh, read in the Sankhya Yoga. Sthita Pratnyasya Ka Bhasha Samadhisthasya Keshava Sthitadhi Kim Prabhashet Kim Asit Prajeta Kim how, how do you describe a person with a steady wisdom? O Krishna, O Keshava and also such a person of steady wisdom how does he talk? How does he walk? How does he behave? And Krishna has come up in this 69th shloka. Sort of an answer to that question. This is a very unique person. He is not like ordinary human beings. Oh Arjuna. Krishna is telling him now. For this Sayami, the one who has controlled his senses, when all the human, all the beings, that which is night for them, at that time, this Sayami is wide awake. Asyam Jagrati Sayami and Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani, the time when all other beings are awake, they are so called active. That time period is like night for this Muni, for this seer, for one who has attained the steady wisdom. So the literal translation is that which is night to all beings in that the disciplined man, the Sayami, wakes. He remains awake. And that in which all beings are awake is the night to the Atman cognizing Muni, the one who has, who is Samadhista. For, them, for that person, it is the night. Now, the faculty of seeing varies with beings in the physical plane. While man is able to see distinctly in broad daylight, the owls and tigers are not able to do so. They, they are not very comfortable with the sunlight, with the daylight, owls tiger and also some other animals. So, while man is very comfortable, we are very comfortable when it is daytime, but just let the sun set and you know all different kind of reactions they start. The children they are afraid of darkness because they don't know what is what lies ahead. Children don't like the darkness. Similarly, most of the animals, they don't like darkness. They are very uncomfortable because they can't see what is around them. But just imagine those animals who can see in the dark, who can't see in the sunlight. For them, they are very comfortable. And Sri Krishna says that the Sayami is like that. 
See, there is no need for him to the external sunlight. There is no need for a Sayyami to see what lies around him, what are the objects around him. He is as comfortable in the darkness without being able to see anything. Because he sees within. That person sees within. For that person, there is no need to see what is around me. That Sayyami, the one with the controlled mind, one who has controlled his senses, for them there is no tendency to go outward. It is all within. The universe is within. The Lord is within. For him, there is nothing outside. So, whether it is night or day is immaterial for him. It hardly makes any difference for him. He is as comfortable in the night as in the day. Unlike normal, ordinary human beings. That they are very comfortable in daytime. But day is therefore virtually night to such people who have controlled their senses. Because whether you see anything, whether you hear anything, where you touch, whether you touch anything, every sense is attached to the divine. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, all this, all these uh, senses, the element of divine is attached. So, the day and night make no difference to them. Day and night as physical facts are one thing and as of practical value quite another for beings differently constituted. We perceive we are very comfortable, we are so confident in, uh, you know, while walking uh, during the daytime. Yes, we can see what are obstacles, but for a person. Then now, are these the real obstacles? The physical obstacles we come across? Are these the physical, are these the obstacles on the spiritual path? No. You may stumble, you may hit, you may fall down because of those physical obstacles in the night that you can't see. But these obstacles are no obstacles on the spiritual path. For a person who is walking the path of spirituality, whether it is night, he can't see the surroundings, it hardly matters because his path is going within. His path is not, my, my, I am getting stumbled upon that table which is, uh, you know, uh, in, in my hall. That I, I can't see that table and I get stumbled and I fall down. It happens when we are walking in the word plain. But when we are within, whether the table is there or not there, it hardly matters. Men are not all wakeful to the same thing. So the, the learned, uh, a, 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 to a gambler, his game is as bright as day. A one, one who is gambling with the cards, hmm, even if it is night. Even if it is night, there is a light there, I can see my cards, I can play. It is as good as day for him, isn't it? Now, the learned person who is fond of reading and all that, for him, doesn't matter whether it is day or night. As far as the light is on, he has a book in his hand of his topic of interest, some high quality of scientific material. Hmm, he is reading and he is gaining some knowledge in that light of the night. So night or day doesn't make any difference for such people. Even so, for a Sayyami, for a man with the controlled senses, whether it is day or night, he is as comfortable in night. To people who are sense bound, things earthly are all real and they are immersed in them. They are wakeful to the mundane. The sense bound people, they need that light. They need that sunlight. They need that 
light of the day to get engaged in those activities of fulfilling the pleasures of the senses through sense object. But to the Brahmatnyani who has conquered the senses and who has awakened to divine consciousness, the spectacle is different. His intuition, his concepts, his precepts, percepts are all filled with divinity. Whatever is Brahman to, man, uh, to him, whatever is surrounding him, is Brahman to him. Whether it is a dog or a cat or a, a beautiful, uh, you know, a woman. For him, everything is the manifestation of Brahman. Everything is the manifestation of the Divine Mother. According to attainment, beings are attuned to different planes of existence. And once a person has this highly enlightened knowledge with the control of the senses, for him, he is as comfortable to do during the day as uh, during the night as in the day. And when all others, all other people remain during the daytime, what they perceive as day, for this person it is night, he is asleep, he is within. People think, oh, this will be sleeping during the daytime. But for him, every moment is the moment of the mother, whether it is day or night. And Sri Ramakrishna's uh, teaching on this particular shloka, which goes in line with the meaning of this shloka. With the realization of God, everything undergoes transformation to the Jnani. It is God himself that has become the phenomenal universe and all beings in it. For him there is no difference, God and this universe, the Brahman and the Jagat, for him everything is same. The real Jnani doesn't say Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya. Sri Ramakrishna never had that attitude of Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya. He never had that attitude. He said, God is there. God is manifesting in his creation also. It is not false. Even this creation of the Lord he is being manifested through him, through the Lord. That, that creation is manifesting the Lord in this form. The son is then perceived as boy Krishna. Then the devotee perceives his son as a young Gopala. Baby Krishna. Father and mother undergo metaphor metamorphosis as divine beings. Wife is no more his mate. Now the wife is no more as, uh, the, the object of sex. No. He sees cosmic mother, the divine mother in his wife also. Then. Recognizing God in all, adoration to him takes place through the worshipful service of all. And the man of knowledge, the man who has attained the self-knowledge, the self-enlightenment, he perceives everything as God. There is no day, there is no night. What people feel night, for him it is the day. Because he doesn't need to see anything outside. He just wants to go within. And what people think of day for him is it is night. He may be sleeping. And on this particular thing, uh, I remembered of uh, the, the uh, story that is being that that is uh, told about uh, uh, a disciple of uh, Sri Ramakrishna Swami Adhutananda Ji, Latu Maharaj, at he had that <laughs> particular quality. In the night, all his brother disciples, they were asleep. This fellow, this young boy, uh, this Adbhut Chamatkar of Sri Ramakrishna, the wonder of wonders that Sri Ramakrishna had created out of this illiterate boy. That he used to cover himself with a blanket and start doing Japa. All, every, everyone else around is asleep. And then some of his the brother disciples, they found out that this rascal brother of ours, he is not asleep taking the blanket on the top of his head, hiding himself under the blanket. Rather, one of his brother disciples once just took that blanket 
and there they saw this Latu Maharaj, Swami Adbhutananda Ji, just repeating his mantra. He was so engrossed in repeating the mantra that he was not uh, aware that uh, the brother disciple has pulled away the uh, blanket and then the brother disciple shouted at others, Look at this fellow! They are all asleep and this fellow is just chanting the name of the Lord. He is just doing the japa. He is just chanting mantra. And is we, we are feeling, we, 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 uh, as if we are feeling that this fellow is asleep, in deep sleep. So that is how the Sanyamis they work. That is how Sanyamis, the uh, ones who have controlled all their senses, they keep on behaving in a totally contrary manner to the worldly people for that matter. What is day to the worldly people is night for them. What is night for the worldly people is day for them. It is the time people wake up. It is the time when all the world is sleeping, they wake up, they remain away, chanting the name of the Lord, going within, realizing that self-elimination. So that is how uh, Shri Krishna has told in this uh, 69th shloka of how a person with a steady wisdom, sthitadi, a person who gets into samadhi, a person with the firm intellect, Having controlled his senses, how does he behave? So that is the 69th shloka. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Krishna Arpanamaste Jai Sri Ramakrishna Jai Thakur Jai Mahi Jai Swamiji